So as I'm sure you've all seen, these Hollywood celebrities have been campaigning against democracy in the streets of America recently. And as far as I can tell, the only argument anyone can come up with as to why they're doing this is that they don't like Trump. I did a video on Madonna's speech the other day, and all I could glean from it was that she can use a hell of a lot of words to say absolutely fuck all. So imagine my feeling of joyfulness when I stumbled across the Film Actors Guild's Alec Baldwin and how he too was joining in the fight against democracy. First I want to find out the comedy army. Where do I sign up for the comedy army? <clears throat> and tonight I want to thank, we should take a moment to thank all of the people from the New York City Police Department who helped make this possible. Let's have a thank you. <clears throat> well, I actually respect that. It's not often that you hear alt leftists saying anything good about police officers nowadays. I just want to say... I've been standing out here in the freezing cold for a long time. I have to go to the bathroom. I have to pee. But I'm holding it in. I'm holding it in. I'm not going to pee. I'm going to a function at the Russian consulate tonight. I'm going to hold it until I get there. And then when I get to the Russian consulate, I'm going to have a really, really long pee. Like the biggest pee I've ever had in my lifetime. Okay, that was actually a pretty good impression. And I find it's always best to get the audience on side with laughter and collective mocking before you start to indoctrinate the little lemmings. Um, I want to say three things really quickly because we've got a lot of people that want to come up and say hi. And oh good, we're coming up to the point now where he lists the reasons he's against Trump's policies. Number one, Donald Trump and Steve Bannon and Mike Pence and all these people that are part of the Trump administration, they think that you are going to lay down. Are you going to lay down? Okay, I genuinely don't understand what they mean when they say shit like, Oh, are you gonna lay down? Are you just gonna take this shit? What are they referring to? Democracy. The one thing that they don't realize is that New Yorkers never lay down. You say whatever you want to about this city, and New Yorkers never, never lay down. Ah, uh, there's nothing like blanket statements and mentioning the city you're in to rally the drones into an orderly line behind you. You ever hear a musician at a gig say, Hello London, or... Or, hello, Melbourne. Do you know why they do that? It's to get the crowd hyped because there's nothing people love more than a celebrity pretending to give a shit about the town or the city that they're in. Are you going to fight? Yeah. Are we going to have 100 days of resistance? Yeah. Fantastic. Fight and resist against what? Fucking democracy. Trump was elected. It's as simple as that. And in a democracy, when a new leader is voted into power, that's it. The people have spoken. And for all its flaws, it's the best political system on earth. So the fact that you want to resist it and fight against it is amazing to me. What would you rather have? A fascist state? Totalitarian rule? Are you a communist? I genuinely don't understand what the point in all of this is. Now, the number two, I want to say this idea from the, uh, that the government, that the, the mayor's office has been talking about, other people have been talking about, about IDNYC, that's a great thing. And I want all of you to spread that word through social media, through your friends, anybody you know that needs that kind of help. That they go to idnyc.gov. idnyc.gov. Remember that. Just like Michael Moore said, what's that number? 202! 225! 3121! Thank you. Thank you. It's Michael Moore's agent over here, his publicist. But get, spread that around. idnyc.gov. Okay, so this IDNYC card is a form of identification for people who live in New York City. Not only is it proof of your residency, but it also provides you with a load of free stuff, like access to museums and zoos, free of charge. They get your data, you get free stuff. Everyone's happy. In order to get one of these cards, you need correct documentation and ID to prove your residence in New York City. I'm listening to National Public Radio, and the guy gets arrested for a crime they don't know whether he committed or not and immigration's waiting outside the courthouse and they arrest him he's in jail detained for a year he's here working he's illegal did he just say he's here working he's illegal or he's here working he's legal he's illegal it sounds to me like he's saying he's illegal <laughs> okay so it's hard to talk about this because he didn't go into specifics i don't know if he said he's illegal or he's legal if he's illegal, then you can hardly complain that he's been incarcerated. And if he's illegal, then he couldn't have gotten an IDNYC card anyway, could he? If Alex said, he's legal, as in, 
he's a legal immigrant allowed to work and live in New York City, then I don't see why the New York Police Department arrested him. Was it just for shits and giggles, or did they have a reason to make an arrest? I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole, because I can't really say too much about something when, one, I can't be clear of what he said, and two, I don't know which man he's referring to anyway. He's here working in some kitchen in Manhattan, and he's got kids at home, and he's got a wife at home, and he's been detained for a year now. Well, we, we've got to provide this IDNYC thing to as many people as we can. We've got to spread that around, IDNYC.gov. And, and the last thing I want to say is about our children. My wife and I have three little children. And for all of you out there who have children, to a degree, I mean, I, you, I'll let you be the judge of that, it's, they're never too young for, them to start, for you to start to teach them about what's going on here. Well, that's all well and good, as long as they show an interest understand what you're telling them, and you don't fill their head with a lot of bullshit propaganda just to make them hate the same people you do. We need to teach our kids facts, and if you want to show them your political point of view, then that's fine, but you need to make sure that they understand that it is just that, a point of view, and that your child can have whatever point of view they like, as long as it's not hateful and it doesn't cause anyone any real harm. For instance, I wouldn't teach my kid to be a KKK member because it's a disgusting, hateful cult. They're never too young for you to teach them what a real American is. See, and it's that kind of talk that makes me feel like you're just herding idiots into the same ideology that you believe in. What the fuck is a real American? I'll tell you what a real American is, shall I? A real American is someone who lives in America. Are you suggesting that someone who voted for Trump isn't a real American? Is this the type of shit you'd have people teach their kids? And an American is wants full participation and full transparency of their government. You will never be anywhere close to full transparency, because people are such retards that if they learned the truth about all the goings on of the world, then there'd be mass hysteria. I genuinely believe that it's a necessary evil to lie to people in order to keep the peace, because ignorance is bliss and all that. Do you honestly think that if a candidate got up in front of the entire nation and told them the truth, that they'd get elected? The answer's no. People like to be lied to, whether they know it or not. People bullshit each other every single day. No, you don't look stupid with that haircut. Yes, that dress does suit you. Oh no, your house is lovely. I think it's shabby chic. On the whole, people don't like to hear the truth if it's a difficult truth to understand or accept. Did we ever find out what went on with Hillary's emails, by the way? And we've never been further away from that than we are now. These people are a disgrace. They are a disgrace to everything you and I believe in. Well, Mr. Baldwin, I believe in democracy. What is it that you believe in? But there is hope, and the hope is us and us fighting. 100 days of resistance, 202-225-3121, IDNYC.gov, you take your pick. Whatever you want to do to stay involved, stay strong. God bless you all, and God bless New York City, and thank you. Now, it's time to get inspired. It's time to get inspired. I'm going to go to the Russian consulate right now and take a piss. A really super, super strong one. So once again, we've got a celebrity who seemingly should stay out of politics unless they can raise some actual salient points to dispute the president's campaign. Otherwise, you can just shut your mouth and sit down. And as for you lot watching, I'll see you all in the next one.